Our next caller is Bethany from Kentucky. Hey, Bethany, how can we help you? Hey guys, uh, thanks for taking my question. So thanks to you guys. I'm in the beginning processes of kind of reconstructing my whole mindset around fitness and nutrition. Um, I'm a former athlete long time ago. And what we are doing now, we're doing this seven day program that you guys put out, my husband and I are. And it. Cool. my question is, what does PRs look like? Do you guys do that with these kind of programs? How do I... What does that look like, I guess, is my question. No, that's a great question. So PR stands for personal record, right? So it's like I lifted more than I did before. I did more reps than I did before. Now, if you're gonna be a if you're gonna compete in a sport where that's part of the criteria, like powerlifting, Olympic lifting, strong man competition. Strong man. There's a very specific structure you want to follow of when you test out your your new PR leading up to a particular event. Now, if that's not you, if you're working out because you want to be fit and healthy and you want to do this for a long period of time, there there really is no set in stone. When you, should, you I For me personally, I allow my body to dictate when that's going to happen. How do I feel? Oh, wow, I'm feeling really strong today. Maybe I'll go heavier. Maybe I'll try myself, you know, try going a little harder. I will say this, though, especially if you work out for a long time, Chasing the PR can definitely become a problem. In fact, I rarely do that now because I don't care as much. The risk of breaking an old record does not outweigh the the or, do, or outweighs the benefit, right? The benefit of doing so. So now I just train. If I feel good, I get a little harder, but I don't necessarily try to break old records. But I guess uh, otherwise, the message is allow your body to dictate that. So depending on how you feel. Um, but I definitely wouldn't be doing PRs every single week. I think that's maybe for beginners. But no, after that, if, yeah. if you're, unless you're competing. So, uh, Bethany, I competed in men's physique and I made it all the way to the professional level, never testing a PR. I did not start, I did not start testing PRs until I got with these assholes and <laughs> we were all, comp we were all competitive about who was squatting more, who was deadlifting more. And Sal was so impressed or so impressive with his deadlift that I wanted to see if I could catch him. He couldn't. And so, <laughs> so I was on a mission, Still on top. all ego driven, no value in how I'm adjusting my program or anything like that. Cause there's going to be someone who's going to try and make the case to you about how valuable it is to know where you need to be at. Not bullshit. If you just care about feeling better, getting stronger, looking better, you can get to the highest level of that yeah. and never test yeah. your PR one time. And the truth is, one of the reasons why I think I feel so passionately about telling someone you like, like you about this is because I've had more aches and pains uh, today and, and chasing PRs with these guys than I ever had in my life before. And it just, when you, when you push your limits like that, it is extremely difficult. It's almost inevitable. You're going to have a little bit of something off and that's all it takes to tweak something or stress something. And now my joints are inflamed. And so yeah. doing that to me is, it, it only makes real sense if I've got a client who is really into, you know, chasing PRs and we want to see these games. But if you are just doing it because you want to see it, I would do it as little as possible, to be honest with yeah. you. In terms of, yeah, sustainability and longevity, I completely 100% agree. However, there are some days where just all the stars are lined up and you're going through uh, one of your favorite exercises, say it's a squatter bench or something, and you just just feel that weight moving easy. I, I honestly, it, it, you do it like a couple times a year and you know, when you get that feeling that one day, like I have no problem with doing a PR that day and, and having fun with it. But literally it's just, I look at it as fun. Like, let's see uh, what I can do today because I mean, my body's giving me all that feedback that I have everything working for me. But other than that, uh, yeah, to their point, it's really not something I program in. Uh, I'm always trying to, to, to be smarter with my programming and, and sort of check myself because, you know, that inner athlete that you described, uh, you know, is going to come up in the forefront, is going to make you do something stupid. Uh, so I'm always checking myself on that intensity. But, you know, like if your body is uh, ready that day and it's it's a fun thing to do, go for it. Now, Bethany, you said your follow. So we did, for people watching this, we did, uh, uh, we gave out a free seven day a week kind of workout program and included, uh, of course, resistance training, some mobility, there's lots of components to it. Um, and it's a great workout, uh, but it's out there for free. So hopefully we can link that in this show. Now I'm asking for you, how long have you been doing this particular workout? 
uh, only about two weeks and okay. it's been, I'm, I'll be honest and you guys touched on it. It's been really tough because I want to do more. Like okay. I'm in that route yes. where I'm just like, okay, let's get back to where we were. I'm trying to get back to old good habits. And this has been really hard to not do more, but at the same time, like I've felt really good. My husband said the same thing too. He's felt really good because we're not going so hard and we're not trying to push it with everything. So. Perfect. And that's actually a lot. We actually, that was a seven day a week yeah. thing we did. Well, so yeah, it, you're, yeah. no, you're good. Trust the process. You're doing a good job. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to let you in our private forum so that you can have support and you can ask other people because that's going to help you. It's going to help you a lot because someone like yourself, um, I get it. You know, you, you want to do more because you can not necessarily the right thing to do, but especially if you're competitive, it's, it's going to, you're always going to be pushing that direction. The private form will help. Problem. Yeah, you can communicate with other people, coach yourself out of it, trust the process, share your progress. Um, and after about 12 weeks of doing that, you'll you'll be I think you'll want to move to another maps program and we have plenty to choose from. But for now, I'm going to let you in the private forum. Uh, make sure you tag us when you post in there so we can see, you, okay? For sure. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank awesome, you very much. Think. You know, PRs are like there's such a good thing but also such a bad thing. Did you know I didn't even know what they yeah. were until like midway through my career? I know. I remember mm. you telling us that. I funny. didn't. I didn't know what it was until- We used to call it max. Like, would you max out on Yeah, it? I so I do I do remember hearing PRs. max out of CrossFit, I believe, or maybe- Yeah, it was Because, uh, I mean, I wasn't, I also Good wasn't very uh, privy to the, you know, um, power lifting community. So maybe they were using that term. Yeah, and I have. So I wasn't around that. So that's part of the reason why I probably didn't hear it at all. But it wasn't until like CrossFit became really popular that I started to hear it all the time. In fact, I remember I would start getting people coming into the gym first time and they'd be, you know, oh, you know, I want to get my PR to this. And I'm like, what? I remember having to ask a, a person coming to get training for me. What's yeah. PR? Yeah, what's Personal P responsibility. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, what's a what yeah, public for? relations? You need a public, <laughs> public relations, relations person? I don't, no, it's, I don't it's understand. Really, <laughs> it's really good because I think it made... Uh, strength, something to focus on right. or track. I agree. Mainstream. Before that, especially women didn't even track strength. They didn't care. I always use the five pound dumbbells. How many times do you get a client like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, how long have you been using five? Oh, I don't know, 15 years. You know? yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got to get you a little stronger or, mm -hmm. or challenge you a little bit. So that's the good. The bad is it could be addicting and you could chase it and that could be everything and then you hurt yourself. Yeah. That's why I so, feel yeah. conflicted about talking about it because I totally agree with you that, and that's one of the things we talk about what, I, what we all like or love about CrossFit is they really did reintroduce strength training for the masses, yep. you know, making it popular again to get strong. And especially for women, like before CrossFit, I don't feel like anybody was communicating that message really well. Right. And it is the right message. It is the right message. Focus on getting stronger and try and get yourself strong. But not at the, the the risk of potentially hurting yourself or also the potential of getting addicted to PRs, which this is the classic person to do that. Totally. Yeah. So a person who is an athlete is the is the one that has to be the most careful about moving into that competitive chasing PR. Here, yeah, not in spite of your body signals that it's providing you. That's yes. why I liked your advice. It's really and, good and advice. Here, and here's the, look, here's the bottom line, okay? Uh, even if you do everything perfectly, if you work out long enough, you're going to have to make peace with the fact that you, you're you not going to be chasing PRs. At some point, yeah. you're not going to hit PRs. <laughs> I'd be very discouraged if that Yeah, so <laughs> like if you do this long enough, you got to figure this out no matter what. Because if you're chasing PRs all the time and you're going to you plan on working out forever, <laughs> at some point, you're going to have to figure this out because you ain't going to be hitting PRs in your 50s and 60s and 70s. I also want to oh, add man. something that I wish that we'd see more of it. And I didn't get a chance to tell her this. But I wish that um, we would talk about PRs because it sounds for personal record. So it doesn't always have to be more weight on the bar. Mm. Why not a personal record on how deep you were able to get a squat or how far you can get your your shoulder around on a, a wall circle right. or how much you can lift your back leg up in a 90-90? Like mm. we need to set PRs on other metrics that are health related or improve the quality of movement opposed to just measuring PRs at, you know, or a PR being of your stamina or endurance or stuff like yeah. that. Like, I hit a PR the other day for how tired I was. I was like, this is the most tired <laughs> yeah. I've, ever, I've ever been. But you know what I PR. mean though, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, totally. like we, we just for always- quality. Yeah, yeah we're, like, we're all, or yeah, or quality of movement. I, yeah. had a, I did the most beautiful 185 pounds. Okay, 185 pounds squat is nothing for me, but it was the most perfect barefoot, beautiful, that's a PR. Yeah. Like, right. that's, like there's nothing wrong with that being a PR or a personal best of, of movement quality. And I wish that, it wasn't always centered around weight on the bar because I think that leads. Yeah, that would be a cool movement. I'd be all for that. Excellent, right. excellent point.